Chris and Dan show. How are you? How are you doing? Welcome back. We got um, we've got an interesting one. You know, we got the mayor of Miami on one of my favorite podcasts, the All In Podcast. Uh, mayor of Miami, Francis Suarez, the first Miami-born mayor of that city ever, which I so, found interesting. So wait, wait, wait. just for cl- my clarification. So yeah. the current the current mayor of Miami was born in Miami, and he's the only yes. mayor ever ever born there. Yeah. So mo- most come from the same state or some other state. You know, did they get into that? Uh, he gets into that a little bit. I don't know if we're gonna watch all that much. You know, okay. we'll watch a little bit of it. But it's um, he talks about how he you know runs Miami like as a mayor, how it's been able to grow so so well under him. He's got some presidential ambitions too. Mm-hmm. So let's get into it. Uh, a lot of the leftists hate him now because he's actually <laughs> running a city well. <laughs> yeah, he's and, uh, yeah, so let's just get into it. We'll pause here and there, but it's not, we're not before, watching all 30 minutes. Before you start, um, so it's funny because yeah. Elon, Elon Musk recently said the same thing that people who are pro business need to start taking over politics, right? This non, I mean, basically is what he said. That um, probably business minded yeah. people who are there, because if you think about it, at least in my opinion, what matters to people, right? Economics. So mm-hmm. how do you improve the economics for the individual as opposed to just giving handouts, which really doesn't work. And it's been proven, at least in my opinion, over time, um, that that doesn't work. So you just have to right. provide opportunities for individuals. So you need to be business minded in order to do that when you're running politics, right? How is this going to affect the business of the nation in terms of economics right. and what policies we're passing? So, yeah. And leftists don't seem to like that too much for whatever reason. Yeah. Well, let's hear a little bit of this guy, Mayor Francis Suarez. This is the first time I actually heard it, like an interview of him, but it was good. I love the All In podcast and they did it in Miami, their conference this year in Miami. Just a few weeks ago, it just wrapped up. So here it is. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, what an audience. The mayor of Miami, Francis Suarez. <laughs> so I, I, take it, I take it 11 just close. I got to dress like a human being for about an hour on my day today. <laughs> well, it actually doesn't close. 11. It, 11 <laughs> doesn't close. So we'll just go there for Sorry, it's 24 okay. hours. It's 24 hours. Not that I've ever been there, but. Yes. Um, hey, thanks for hosting us. We were Thanks thinking of a place me. to do it. and You know uh, what 11 is? Gracious. No, but it's not important. It's probably some well, I didn't fear it was, but I figured some it was restaurant. A, Enough to, a restaurant. Yeah. I haven't been to Miami in like five years. Okay. What's Feeling 11? Did you take out anybody's poker money? Yeah, let us know in the comments. Everywhere else in the country, so you decided to come here, right? Yeah, so we're going to sweep everything up I like here. That. Um, but uh, what an incredible um, resurgence and courting of the tech industry you've done here. Uh, tell us about a little bit about what's happened in the last two years since you started replying to people on Twitter saying, hey, um, if you're running a business, we'd like to help you. Yeah, it's sort of a United States of America type of approach, right? Wow. Fun, fun, <laughs> fundamentally American where we want to create high paying jobs in our city. We want to empower people. We want to give people an opportunity at being prosperous. And uh, for some reason in the, this country, in, in certain cities, that's been frowned upon or it makes you feel guilty about it. And here in Miami, we're fundamentally shaped by our uh, sort of our, our origin story. Right. And many people in Miami were exiled from their country of birth uh, for because in those countries, uh, communist regimes took over. And obviously in those countries, uh, a government official is saying, hey, give me your property. Give me your uh, your business. And don't worry, I'll make everybody equal. And they do make everybody equal. They make everybody equally miserable. So, uh, you know, they, they've accomplished that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And whenever government wants to grow. Chris, you're going to move to Miami after this. Bro, no, uh, but I completely, should... completely agree with his messaging, right? What communist country doesn't pretty much make everybody equally miserable? Right. That's the, basically the outcome for all of them. Run yep. in the opposite direction. Uh, and so in Miami, we do it uh, by, by following some simple rules. We keep taxes as low as humanly possible. And shocker, our uh, budget has doubled in size. 
uh, since we uh, have kept taxes to 1960s lows. Uh, we focus on quality of life. So we have uh, the lowest homeless rate since 2013. Mm-hmm. We're the first major city, I think, in America to actually try to get to zero. We want to have zero homeless. Um, and we, we, we actually invest in safety. You know, we actually, while other cities decrease funding for our police, we've increased funding for our police. We have the most. Yeah. Well, time out. We have the most police officers we've ever had in our. Yeah. So I, I'm curious, is this uh, Mayor, Su- how do you pronounce his name? Suarez? Suarez. Yeah. So Mayor Suarez, is he Republican or Democrat? Because he's speaking he's like Republican. a Republican. Yeah, he's okay. Republican. Okay. Stream. By the way, they have the hardest job in America right now, are our police officers. And I'm going to give you a shocking correlation. Our crime went down. Shocking. Mm. Figure. Go figure. So you added police. We added police. And uh, the crime went down. Yes. I know. It's, 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 it's fascinating. <laughs> our homicide rate went down by 23% last year. This year, it's down by 40% from the 23% wow. of last year. So almost wow. 63%. In two years. That's amazing. So that basically... The combination of economic prosperity yep. and then safety and security. Yep. People are too busy to think about all of the long tail things they could be doing to screw up their own lives or somebody else's life. They're just living a good life. Yeah, we have 1.4% unemployment. Um, we have, we're number one in the nation in wage growth. We're number one in the nation in tech jobs. We're number one in tech job migration. I think we've moved 2 trillion AUM in the last 18 months. And our VC pipeline grew by 200% year over year. And to put that number in context, if it was a zero-sum game and our gain was, for example, San Francisco's loss, which it may very well be going into the future, um, in two years, we would overtake San Francisco as the VC capital of the world. Wow. Yeah. And to be clear, that's very impressive. You know, yeah. this is a very liberal city that is welcoming of all yeah, people. This absolutely. is not like you've become some like insane, crazy right-wing, like Teal Sachs. Insanity. <laughs> you still are like fine with people living their lives and you know yes we're, we're, we're very much into freedom uh we, we, we're we're kind of sort of libertarian here uh in miami uh and and you know we we want people to live their lives as they see fit uh we're not here to tell them what to do we're here to uh, create the conditions for their prosperity to the extent that government even gets involved in that right we we like to stay out of people's business we try to be efficient uh, which I know is a, almost an oxymoron in government. And we try to facilitate people's growth and, and success. That's <laughs> this it. is That's awesome. Tell us about your uh, support of crypto. So, you know, when we were trying to create this uh, buzz and ecosystem, uh, we knew we had to uh, disrupt the, the, the natural order of things. And so our hack, right, our um, David and Goliath sort of slingshot hack was to go all in on crypto. Uh, part of the reason why is, uh, you know, I understood the fundamentals of it. I like the fundamentals of it. Um, you know, I think one of the things that's missing in our society is trust. And when you see policymakers, whether at the Fed or, or, or the federal government spending significantly more money than what it's taking in, um, which is creating hyperinflation, we see interest rates going up. I mean, it's sort of a, uh, a terrible uh, man, man or woman inflicted uh, suffering. And you see a system that is uh, designed to sort of create trust by making it um, humanless, uh, in effect. Uh, it was something that was very attractive. Obviously, the blockchain, I was part of the blockchain foundation, uh, part of the blockchain task force for the state of Florida. So I had a, a sort of uh, education on the technology prior to the moment where I sort of decided to go all in on it. And I thought that it could be a differentiator being a young mayor who understood the tech, um, who understood that I wasn't taking as big a risk as people thought I would be taking. Um, and it's been great for our ecosystem. I mean, whatever the price of Bitcoin is at a given moment is pretty much irrelevant. What's important to me is we have the Bitcoin conference. We have you guys. Uh, we have the Bitcoin conference, which is a tens of millions of dollars in economic development. We brought uh, a tremendous amount of funds and, uh, and, uh, and exchange, exchanges to headquarter here in Miami, which has created hundreds of high paying jobs. Uh, and then we got uh, FTX to name our arena, which is a $200 million uh, gift or uh, contribution to our, our community. So it's, it's been something that's benefited us to the tunes of hundreds of millions of dollars. So regardless of what you think about crypto as a technology, as an economic development tool, it's been game-changing for us. Sachs, I'm curious how you think about what you've seen in this city versus you know, where we all live and operate in the Bay Area, uh, and then across the country. Uh, how, how do you grade the job the mayor has done here, and what do you think the lessons are for the rest of the country? 
Um, I think, you know, Mayor Suarez has done an amazing job here, and it's something that other cities should be looking to emulate, which is simply to be helpful instead of, you know, being an impediment. Uh, I did an event for Mayor Suarez in San Francisco, you know, my, my home, and it was the best attended event. I've, and I've done a lot of uh, political events. The one we had with you was the best attended event I think we ever held. And the reason, there was a tremendous amount of curiosity on the part of people in San Francisco in terms of what's been happening here. And the kind of, the thing that you heard over and over again uh, by the people who attended that event who had asked questions was, you know, why can't we have a mayor like you in San Francisco? Because I don't live there. <laughs> Actually, I'm, pre I'm president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors, so I kind of jokingly say, well, I'm kind of, you know, trying to, yeah. but every, every city I go to, they ask me the same question, and I'm like, well, I really like Miami a lot. Yeah. I mean, fundamentally, we have not just a mayor, but because the mayor in San Francisco is actually not bad. London Breed's not bad. The issue is the Board of Supervisors, who really controls the city. I mean, they've been engaged in killing the golden goose. I mean, San Francisco and the Bay Area had a lock on the tech ecosystem. And because the political forces there define tech as the enemy, they basically have driven it out. And as a result, you now have emergent tech hubs all over the United States, starting with Miami and Austin um, and other cities like that. And it's kind of crazy. San Francisco had the monopoly and it basically chose to give it up. Well, spending, it was a giant grift, right? Aren't they at like 4X budget per capita over New York? It's like or yeah, it's 3X, crazy. it's something insane. Yeah, it is crazy. Mayor, let me ask a question around, sure. um, one of the reasons Silicon Valley exists is because- So of he's gonna get, Friedberg here is gonna get into like the university. So the only, like the main thing Miami has that's, the, that, the, that Miami does not have, that the Bay Area has is like world-class universities. The only, really the only one in Miami is University of Miami and it's not world-class by any stretch. Well, so it is, it is athletically. Yeah, but like, <laughs> sure. But to get like, you know, tech talent, like, and, and biotech, he was going to get into biotech too. And why the Bay Area is still good for that. It's like the people there. But Mayor Suarez counters with, well, the interesting thing is 80% of the people who work in San Francisco right now, they're not from there. So they're not tied down to that place. So if they're, you know, they're, they're moving and they already are moving to no Austin, point. Miami. So, Sure. He's trying to get the universities world class there. It's obviously not something you can do overnight. I mean, you're not going to make University of Miami be Stanford or UCSF or Berkeley overnight. Sure. But, sure. you know, those places are, I mean, as far as technical schools, you know, like science, let's just talk hard science. Like those are our very liberal schools. But when it comes to science, it's still, you know, top notch when it's not really a liberal arts major you're talking about science so that's probably the one thing miami has working against it but everything else you know all signs are leading to that place becoming a major if not one of the if not the most important city in the u.s definitely like top five in the next 10 years and then he gets into like maybe he's gonna run for president at some point but um, yeah, I just thought it was interesting to bring to this channel and to bring to you because I watched it over the weekend and I was interested in that, fascinated so, by that interview. Sure. And, you know, it's just amazing uh, the job that he's done with such an influx of individuals because Florida's grown, I think, more than any other state. Um, Flor yeah, Florida's insane. And, you know, and, Florida's been growing like gangbusters. And, and um, I Sorry, my get... dog wanted to get out to pee. But yeah, I mean, F Florida, Tennessee, Texas. I would guess the majority that have moved to Florida have moved to the Miami area. So, you know, certainly there's something to be said about that. That's obviously going to be good for the economics of Miami. But, you know, the flip side of that is usually going to have problems with more homelessness and more crime, in which he's also reduced that. So he's done a very good job, right? He's what what influx of positive items that he's taken, he's also reduced the negatives that usually pursue that yeah, as well. He's negated, he's counter proactively countered the negatives. And uh, later in that interview, we're not going to watch the whole thing, but he gets into like the exact number, you know, they count like the exact number of homeless, they track it like mm -hmm. 
by numbers. So you can't change something you can't measure. So that you know that's something that they're on top of. They actually have sure a system where they're tracking like on a daily basis the number of homeless. Right. In the there's, city. there's a number of factors to homelessness, right? It's cost of living. Mm-hmm. Um, it's mental illness and then it's drug use. Those are the right. th- those are the three factors that contribute to homelessness. So he's doing something right, right? He's 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 and dealing with usually, all three of those all three of those items. He's dealing with it sounds like, and it's usually not cost of living. <clears throat> I mean, that is one of the factors. But what that has what that does is just push people in other areas, like exurbs of the city. So like like in SoCal, you know, it pushes people east inland. Well, um, people, but people do wind up becoming homeless because of it. I mean, yes, no, yes. So I'm just saying that's that's one of the contributors, right? The other, the, contributors. the other two are much more major in this. Yeah, right? I think so. I drugs, think so. And, drugs, alcohol, and uh, mental illness. But yeah, it just goes to show you what a little like, I guess, less bureaucracy and more pragmatism can actually do. Well, you know, he touched on all the things that I would agree completely agree with right Bus- uh, your government should do what it can but really it should limit what it does right right and basically he's just saying we'll stay out of your way you know you do what you need to do to be successful yep and really that's what you want from your government at least i do at least anybody who cares about well, anyone who's sensible <laughs> well, but a lot of leftists don't right they want more regulations and and more government inter- intervention which generally means it's going to be difficult more difficult for you to do absolutely anything and you're probably going to make less money and that breeds its own form of corruption too i mean the argument for for more leftist policies typically is like wait wait, wait. i'm sorry just to interrupt real quick i'm not even saying leftist policies i'm just saying government in general it doesn't even have to be leftist right right just more government in general the argument for more government intervention usually seems to be like pointing to examples like the Koch brothers. I read the book on the Koch brothers, like what unfettered unregulated, uh, what unfettered, uh, capitalism can do to an industry. And, you know, that's true. There does need to be a balance, but, the opposite extreme of that also leads to corruption. Like just as much as like complete deregulation leads to corruption and greed from business owners perspective, Mm -hmm. uh, unfettered regulation leads to corruption as well, where you get people like Newsom and, uh, you know, all, all those kind of like similar people to him giving sweetheart deals to their friends and families, um, Mm -hmm. with the state money. So, I don't think the answer is as simple, but what this guy's saying is we've gone so far towards regulation, like as a country, he's just pushing it back a little bit and he's reaping the well the rewards. But it's not like it's all great also. He, you know? Sure. And he's not preaching anarchy. What he's preaching, and he even said so, is libertarianism, right? Which yeah. is limited government not too much but yes it's a it's a necessary evil is basically what he's saying we need government like you're saying in some situations right to police people like the Koch brothers uh sure. away yeah. from but a perfect example is police right that's a governmental institution right mm-hmm. it's paid for through the government it's instituted by the government so it's a, ne- it's a necessity if you want to have a, a safe area right right so there are necessities from the government but absolutely you don't want you don't want too much government. You don't want the government into every facet of your life. You just don't want that. You don't want unfettered regulation, but you also don't want unfettered deregulation either. Sure. We're just so far away from that these days that it's harder to conceive of that. But if you go to the 80s and analyze the Coke brothers and the Coke, Coke industry or whatever the company was called, Coke company, C-O-K-O-C-H, uh, You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Well, it's funny. Um, and this is, we could do a video on this at some point, but in the 80s, and even Bernie Sanders himself said this in the 70s, 80s, and even part of the 90s, it was a Koch brothers institution for illegal immigration, right? It was bring bring <laughs> so on you get labor, the cheap labor. Yeah, yep. bring on the labor. We want cheap labor. 
We don't want to have to mm-hmm. pay these Americans too much. Right. <laughs> right. And that's flipped. It's flipped since the nineties. It's yep. now, it's now a leftist thing. Right. Right. For a, for a number of different reasons. And I don't really want to go into that because we could do a whole video on that, but can, yeah. it's just funny how it's flipped. Well, it is a good book, you know, the Koch brother, uh, I think it's called the Koch brother, but I listened to it. It's like a 30 hour audio book, but they also, you know, those guys are like true capitalists. I mean, they wrote a manual for their employees. The author tried to bash them like, oh, they wrote a manual for how to treat your, your business. Like you're a business owner if you're an employee, but I actually think there's a lot of good from that too. So, um, of course, unfettered deregulations, uh, got them greedy and uh, did a lot of damage to society as well. But the same is true for unfettered regulation. Well, if I, I'm telling you, if I had to pick one or the other, I would take anarchy over communism. Sure. But we don't have to pick one. Over uh, I another. agree. Completely agree. I'm just saying if you had, if you only could pick one of the two, I would take complete anarchy over complete communism. I hear you. But the whole point of being in a democracy is you don't have to get to either of those extremes. Uh, again, I understand that. I'm just saying I think we're getting too close to being pushed to the communism side of things. Personally. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. So hopefully with more people like Mayor Suarez and Yeah, seems uh, like a good dude. Yeah. And you heard Sachs, the elitist in San Francisco are all curious how the hell is he doing this? Why can't we have this here? <laughs> right, right. Because it just doesn't dawn on them that you know too much government can be a problem. What? What do you mean? Yeah, it just doesn't dawn on them for whatever reason. I think it's guilt. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, I'm starting to think it's guilt. Hmm. Like guilt because you're successful. Mm-hmm. So we Especially keep... those tech people, you know, they made so much money in so, such short amount of time, and that's why they tend to vote left. Um, makes it seem like they, and maybe they feel like they're helping the less fortunate. Um, but now I think they're starting to realize that that's backfired, and there's got to be some common ground. So I think a lot of those guys are becoming libertarians, actually. Yeah, I mean, you look at the current economics of today right with gas prices i think on average or what five dollars a gallon in the country i saw on twitter like california is pushing almost 10 bucks a gallon it's not it's not i saw on twitter right yeah, yeah. Tw- twitter blows things both ways out of proportion but, i know it does that's what it's for gas is very expensive in california so every every third day i drive by the gas station um a chevron Costco? near a chevron near oh. me i get gas at Costco because it's cheaper and it's a good gas, but the Chevron I drive by every three days or so, it goes up literally about 40 cents every three days. Mm-hmm. And, and the last time I was there, it was it was six six ninety nine, I think, for regular. Wow. So I mean I think yes. I paid a dollar less than that today. So gas prices are just getting ridiculous. And who does that affect, right? That affects poor. Because they still get gas. Affects, inflation affects the poor. Yeah, before it affects anyone else. Matter Doesn't... of fact, it makes the rich wealthier. Exactly, and I, hopefully, leftists are starting to realize this, right? Because they supposedly want to help the poor. Well, guess yeah. what? Things like this don't help the poor. I Inflation think they does are. not. I think the like the hardcore leftists, they're never changing, right? They're communists, but I think the majority of the Democratic Party doesn't feel that way, and we'll see. It'll be, I'm not much into politics, but we'll see the next elections, how they play out. Yeah, well, if you're watching this channel, understand that uh, inflation is not good for your pocket, which I'm sure you've realized at this point. Groceries are like doubling in cost. Gas is doubling in cost. Everything's doubling in cost. For wage earners, for wage earners, um, it hits them the worst because their wages don't go up until their employers take care of themselves first yep and, you know and if and you know i understand there's concerns about and dan and i are going to do this is a good segue dan and i are going to do a podcast on this tomorrow in terms of global warming so i understand climate change climate well, change. Eh, it's the same thing right they changed i have to finish global, reading the book they changed from the term global warming to climate change because they couldn't prove global warming necessarily right 
all, right. at all times. You so can't anyhow, really prove climate change either. I mean, what, no, you can't. One but, of the things that I think is the well, let me finish my thought. Sun, here. and it's this sh- flipping of the mag- electromagnetic poles, well, along with any number of other things it could be as well. But, sure. Um, you know, if you're concerned, if you think it's worth getting off of uh, gas, right, petrol, uh, to petrol, get into other petrol, to get into other sources of of energy, you know, then maybe it's worth it to you to pay ten, twelve dollars a gallon in gas. For mm. most of us, though, it's not. I yeah, think. yeah, especially truck drivers. I mean, we can do a whole video on that. Yeah, and that's a big part of the reason why everything is going up in cost because everything gets delivered by trucks. Maybe tomorrow after our interview, we do a reaction to um, a channel I've been watching right. about this. So, but the point is, some people will think it's worth it, right? The inflation is worth it, right? To get us off of petrol. Well, you guys let us know in the comments. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Yep. Catch y'all later. Bye-bye.